Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool, and instead of doing real estate today, I wanted to show you a tip on something kind of small. Instead of going very large, we're gonna scale it down a little bit. We're gonna do some macro. In fact, we're gonna be so small, it's gonna be something only about this size. Now, I found a really neat rock. I find some fossils from time to time, and I like to look at them really close, but this is also not just for hobby. This is something you can do for product photography. So this is the setup that I usually use for product photography, and I'll get into that in more detail a little bit closer on it. But I'm gonna show you not just how to set this up, how to light it, how to use a macro lens to get that, but you'll never get everything exactly tack sharp unless you do some stacking. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a bunch of exposures. We're going to do it at different focal lengths. It's super easy to do because Photoshop knows how to take that stack and make it all work. Now I'm going to do something with a whole lot of light. Boom! <laughs> but you don't have to do that with this. This is my product setup and it's using uh, Einstein's that I also use for uh, doing a lot of my fitness photography, portrait photography. I usually don't haul these out when I do real estate, but they work really well for doing this. But you can do this with speed lights. You can also do this with a lot of natural light also. By doing it this way, I've got a lot of highly diffused light that I can put into this. So before I get into the, the setup and how I'm going to do that, let me, on the broader span of things, show you why I'm doing this with this big setup. So I've got some bounce umbrellas. I've got these Einsteins. They're very powerful lights. And I want to be able to shoot at about f16 and that at least, so that gets me a good depth of field to start with when I go through my stack. So I need a lot of light, but I need to make it even. And I want it to be soft because there's so many little cracks and crevices, little nuances, and I don't want anything in the rock, especially when working with quartz, to just glare out. And that's the same thing when you're shooting diamonds and other stuff. There's other tricks to that, but one of the basics of getting into all that is highly diffused. So bouncing some light off umbrellas really helps. Natural light also is highly diffused, but you'll notice that you'll, you will have some challenges unless you can really control the light, but it's a good way to start out. Also, I've got a what's known as a product tent or a diffuser tent, and so it's just a lot of diffuser material. These things aren't that much. They fold down, collapse, and they just roll up into or fold up into that tri-format that you have in a circle that normally comes in like your reflector pack. So having that all together, I've got a lot of diffused light coming in from everywhere. So small little tiny subject in there, but a whole lot of light. I'm not going to get too harsh of shadows. I'm going to be able to get the detail that I want. So let's take a closer look at how I have this actually set up. Okay, so here we are, a little closer look at what's happening. So inside the product tent itself, I've just got some black paper. This is just some savage black, standard black background paper, and I've just cut it so it can fit inside of here, rolled it over a book that's just laying in there so I've got a little bit of a platform to then lay the rock with the quartz. I've also got then a little dime next to it. I like to show the relative size of everything that we're doing. On the camera, this is a full frame Nikon. It's a, just an older D600. Um, I've got on it an inexpensive uh, Takina lens. It's their uh, f2.8 uh, macro lens, 100 millimeter. And I found that to just be an outstanding macro lens. It's a little funky to try to work with, with some of the, the ring and everything, the manual focus, and you'll see me play with that in just a second. But otherwise than that, I mean, if you don't have a macro lens, you can try it with other lenses. You're gonna have to crop down quite a bit. You're not gonna get a real poster size image. So using the, the macro, we've got a lot of detail, and I really recommend this lens. This is a fantastic, the Takina F2.8 100 millimeter uh, macro lens uh, for a full frame. So with that then, I use cactus triggers on everything. And one of the most important things here too that I find, especially if I'm gonna do product, this is for someone commercial, not just for hobby, you gotta use a light meter. So with that then, I'm gonna meter the light inside of it. I'm gonna trigger the lights before I actually take a picture. And I'm just gonna see where we are. So I'm gonna get my bulb kind of close to where those rocks are and just close my eyes and boom. And we're at about uh, F16, so not looking too bad. A little bit high on the F16 side, but that's okay. I'd rather be just a slight bit overexposed. I'm shooting in raw so I can tone that down. If I'm a little under, I'm shooting at ISO 100, by the way, so I've got a lot of detail. But if I had some shadows, I'd get some noise in there, and that's gonna throw off some of the, uh, the focus stacking that I'd be doing. So anyways, with that in mind, I've got that all metered. I'm happy with it. If not, I'd be adjusting stuff. What I'm gonna first do is I'm gonna just focus on the very bottom edge of the rock. And that's where I'm gonna get my automatic focus point. Now, a lot of people will say that you should really do uh, you know, manual focus the whole way through when you're doing macro photography. 
yeah, my age and my eyes and having to wear these glasses that are actually trifocals ain't going to happen. So anyways, I get that focal point, that's my starting point. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a picture and then I'm going to turn the focus ring just a little bit to focus my depth of field a little farther, click another picture, adjust the focus ring again, take another picture, and do that about nine times. You can do it as many as you want. You'll just have more and more uh, you know, pictures to work with. You'll probably get a lot more detail out of it. Don't worry, Photoshop's gonna figure all this out. And I'm shooting at a high enough shutter speed. I'm not really worried about moving the camera. Also, Photoshop's gonna automatically align the layers anyways during this focus stack. So I'm not worried about triggering and moving stuff. I'm gonna touch stuff all over the place. So anyways, here we go. So I'm gonna start just shooting my stack and I'm gonna go boom, I'm gonna change the focal point, fire, change the focal point, fire do that a whole bunch of times good we've got our stack now let's take that stack into Photoshop and see how it works Okay, now that we have our footage, it's time to go in and do the editing. The process of doing the photo stacking really isn't that difficult at all. I'm going to show you a few editing techniques as well, and I'll elaborate on more of those in future videos. But for now, let's get to it. Let's take that footage into Photoshop, and let's work with it and get a really tack sharp macro. Ready? Let's go. Now, as you may recall, what we were doing is going in very close. So we were just doing shot after shot after shot. If you look in here at 100%, you can see our first shot. We see a lot of uh, great uh, focus but at the very edge. But even though we were at F16, things in the background, like what looks like a tooth, is out of focus. So when we go in even closer, let's take this guy. He was the second shot. We can see that we start getting some focus showing up in these other areas, especially the third shot, even more focus. So we need to take these in. And by the way, I took all these uh, shots, they were raw, and I converted them into TIFF, not using Lightroom, which I've explained in other videos, won't get you the, uh, the accuracy that you want when you're doing just shots like this. If you're doing batch stuff, you know, Lightroom definitely is probably the best thing, but uh, I'll get more into that depth on that on other videos. Anyways, let's get back to the focus stacking and to take this macro to the next level. This was a very small rock. You can see the dime in relationship to it. A lot of detritus down here on the ground of it. So we're going to clean all that up. We're going to do the whole shebang really quick. Okay, so what we want to do next is, it's very simple, in Photoshop just go to File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack. Very simple. I'm going to browse to where our TIFFs are, so I'm just going to go ahead and browse. And this is where they are for our tutorial. I'm going to select all those shots that we took and say OK. And I'm going to click down here to attempt to automatically align source images. It does a pretty good job. If you ever have a problem with this, you can edit them you know, all together. And then you can do like I've got another preset um, that you've probably seen in other tutorials where I automatically align these layers. But this tool does a very good job. It's just using the same algorithm um, after it gets all these loaded into a stack. So this is nice. Once these are all ready for us, in this case, there's actually nine. You can see that there are some alignment issues. Sure enough, on the edges, um, some of them I had actually touched the camera enough there's almost it's completely faded but we still need to get that focus stack going here's all the pictures how do we get them all blended select them all go up to edit auto blend layers stack images and just click OK at this point what it does is Photoshop is using an algorithm that goes through and finds what pixels are tight. So it knows what would be in focus. Loose pixels basically, blurred pixels, aren't going to be in focus. That's why everything is like whoosh, just kind of washed. But where it's sharp then you're going to have a lot more detail. So it figures that out. Very smart algorithm that it has. I just love where Photoshop is now. I couldn't imagine where it's going to be in about 20 years. But this is going to blend it together. If you do see any mistakes you're going to have masks and you can go back and correct that yourself. But look at just what happened. It finished it up, all layers have a mask, and it's painted in where the areas it figured were sharp. Let's go in and take a look, 100% Alt V1, and use my hand tool with H and move around and look at that. That is in focus. That's really in focus. If we were to disable the uh, first uh, layer mask, just disable that right there, we can see that it was only really in focus on that one down here. But with all the layers blended together, everything became sharply in focus. Okay, we're on our way to do this. Alt V, Alt F, excuse me, V, Alt V F. I got myself confused there. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select all these images. We're gonna just go ahead and right click and say, we can actually say flatten image or merge layers. We'll just do flatten image. Really doesn't matter at this point. Now let's go ahead and just crop that down a little bit so we have a size that's decent enough to work with. All right, now, 
a couple things we can do. I'm just going to show real quick and not get into the, two, the extreme detail of it, but we need to go ahead and take care of this, uh, this background here, not looking all the greatest. So we're going to take this a step further. We're going to go ahead and duplicate that layer. Underneath of it, I'm going to make a new layer, layer, new layer. I'm going to call it black. That's going to get our black background with the default black selected. Grab the paintbrush tool and paint in black. Great. Now what we can do is I can take this layer and go layer, mask, reveal, and start erasing from it, and then I'll have black underneath of it. And don't worry about the edges, we're gonna fix all that later. So I'm just gonna go around here real quick, select a whole bunch of this. You can do this in sections too. I'm just to do this real quick, I'm just gathering this right here real quick, and boom, we've got that. If I were to say select now and delete it, it's gonna delete the wrong thing. So what we do is we go Control Shift I, it inverts the selection, we delete it. Boom, delete this little bit up here, so we also get that, boom. All that I did was select it, hit the delete key, we've got that going on, great. So, we still have this going on around here, so we're gonna add another layer. Layer, adjustment layer, levels. And we're gonna call this one black and back. And what we're gonna do is up the black slider, which is the one on the left, boom, that went away. But it also affected our rock, so we need to go ahead and erase that. So let's go out here and select our rock, select the quick selection tool, and let's start selecting around that rock. I love this tool. You just gotta love it. It just knows what to select. And you know what, it, it does a really good job. I'm gonna turn off the levels layer so I can see even more. Yeah, see it missed a little bit down here because those levels were really extremely darkened. So we'll get that, even some of this down in here. It, this is so much better than using the magic wand tool. Thank you so much, Adobe. Okay, so now that we've got that, I'm gonna go up to this layer where we, our blacks are, of the levels, and I'm just gonna hit delete, that got rid of it. And I'm gonna do the same thing real quick over on the dime, that was an easy one to figure out, and delete that as well. So that's great. Now we still have a little bit down over here, so if we zoom in, we've got that. We can just go in here now and select our eraser tool, and then start erasing that off. I'm using 100% opacity in this case, but I'm erasing the mask from that tool. So it'd be harder before, I could do it here and try to get really close, but I only want to erase where I'm really gonna need it. So that's why I left that layer on, move around over here a little bit, and just erase all that stuff. So that's looking good. Now, I'm not gonna do all of that. That would be kind of boring for you to sit here and watch me. So a couple other things though we're gonna do. I want this also to stand out, the rock itself. So let's add another adjustment layer. It'll be another levels layer, and let's call it rock levels. And what we're gonna do, we don't have to worry about painting this on so much, and I'll tell you why in a second, but let's just go ahead and up that just a little bit, boom. Okay, now those levels are looking good. Don't have to paint that on because the background's already black, so we're looking pretty good. I do wanna get rid of these highlights, so I'm gonna go ahead to our layer of the rock, I'm gonna duplicate it with Control J, I'm gonna go into Filter, and I'm gonna go ahead and select the Camera Raw Filter, and this one we're gonna down the highlights, so use this highlight slider brush, boom. Look at how that came in. This is basically everything you can do in Lightroom. All the effects are here, everything that you could imagine. So I'm just gonna use it for the highlights right now. Let's down those. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this layer mask and add another one where we go hide all. I'm gonna go in here and select my brush tool and with about a, uh, let's say, a, let's say go with a 15, maybe a 10% opacity, that's good and we'll just go ahead and start painting that in where we wanna get rid of these highlights. It really started to get blown out here, so we wanna make sure that these areas really show the, uh, the crystalline formations that were in here. Same thing over here, not worried about hitting the edges over here, why? Because it's already black. So we don't have highlights to worry about there, so that's a, a nice benefit of working on black. If you were working on a white background, it would just be the opposite. You'd have, a, have an issue there. So, okay, now we got rid of those annoying highlights that were in some of those areas. A little bit over here, too, on the edge of this rock. Didn't really want that. So now that's looking better. Okay, now I can also do things like add a little bit of clarity, which I'll do. I'll duplicate that layer again. I'm going to move that layer up. This one down here, by the way, so we don't forget that. We'll call it high because that's highlights. This one over here is going to be called clarity. We'll call it that. We're going to go ahead and go back into Camera Raw, Alt-T. Camera Raw Filter, and we're gonna just go ahead and up the clarity on that. Boom, that's good enough for, for this uh, tutorial. Now we're gonna go ahead and get rid of that layer mask, delete layer mask, layer mask hide, and then we zoom in, and we're just gonna go ahead and paint in then where we want that clarity. So 
just a lot of clarity in some of these places, especially around the, the nice little details that we have here. So that's good. Now I've got clarity where I want, and I could go in more detail to do that, but I really want to sharpen it up and show that. So grab all three layers. I'm going to go ahead and hit Control J to duplicate all those. Right click on them. I'm going to merge layers. And now what I'm going to do, let's view, zoom in 100%. So we can see what we're doing. I'm going to go to Alt T Sharpen and Smart Sharpen. And in Smart Sharpen then, watch what happens. It's going to sharpen it up and it's going to be super boom, tack sharpen. You can see I'm really high on the sharpening and that's okay. It's going to get pixelated in places if I leave it that way, but we're going to work with masks. So let's go ahead and let it sharpen like that. And once it's done, we'll just add a layer mask, layer mask, hide. And now let's use a brush and brush in where we want that. So using a 10%, I'm just going back and forth with this brush, getting then the real sharp areas I want to see right around these little bubbly pieces of quartz that come through. And maybe up here too, this was a real nice detail that came through where that other type of quartz uh, crystalline formation was coming through. Can't believe I found this just on the ground. Hikers and mountain bikers were running over this and it actually cracked parts of it. And it was very small, obviously, that's why they didn't see it. But under this microscopic look of macro, we've got something that looks very sharp. Now there's other adjustments I could do to it, but basically that's it. So when we take once again at the finished product, it looks like this. If we go into then 100% to check that sharpness, it looks like this. So that's it in a nutshell, or basically a piece of quartz. I always thought that, I thought it was a very neat rock when I found it just the other day as I was out walking around. I thought definitely I want to take a closer look and see what it is. And I knew how to do it using this type of stacked and macro type photography. Now, this is something you can also do when you're uh, doing products. Very common thing. You're getting in very close. So no matter what you use for a uh, uh, an aperture as small as you want to get, you're still going to have a very shallow depth of field because of the focal distance from where you are to the product. So by stacking this, you'll get that, that uh, clarity, that, uh, definitely that sharpness throughout the entire range. You can also use this, for instance, in real estate if you really needed to. It wouldn't be necessarily for an MLS picture, but something for a builder or for a magazine. So you want to have a room that's very tack sharp. Well, if you can't really use a small aperture and you don't have that much light that you're working with, do a focal stack. You can just stack a whole bunch of those pictures together, a bunch of different frames at different focus points throughout the entire room. You stack them all together. Now, of course, then this for this one particular shot, I decided to edit it on black, pure black. So that's why I took those extra steps to do that. And of course, then sharpening at the end to really bring it out. One of the tricks, though, to remember, masks. Use a lot of masks and you'll have all kinds of versatility uh, through your editing process. Well, anyways, that's how it's done. That's it. That's it for now. I hope you liked this video and I hope it was very helpful. If you do, you can subscribe to this YouTube channel. It doesn't cost you anything. And as soon as one of these type of videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. Thanks a lot for watching. And until next time, take care and get out there and shoot something.